Well, I'm Eric Bilderback, uh, one of the ag teachers, uh, one of the three ag teachers here at El Reno. Um, this is my teaching partner, Mark McPeak, and we're going to talk to you guys uh, today about the, diff the differences in a couple of different steers. We have a steer that was slink sheared, um, due or scheduled to go to Houston. Uh, we have another steer back there that you're going to see next, and we're, we'll pair them up again here in a second. Perfect steer that was scheduled to go to the Oklahoma Youth Expo. Now today we're going to talk about the differences in these two steers and what we're going to want you young people to do uh, for your assignment is you're going to log into your AET system, your agricultural experience tracker, and you're going to go in there and, and do a journal entry. That's going to be your assignment for today. And then as a bonus, uh, these steers are going to both be harvested in Union City on Monday. So later next week, uh, we'll have some videos of the carcasses. Mark and I can't go in there um, just due to uh, uh, the federal regulations at this point. Uh, but they're going to take a video for those steers, and then you'll get to see us enjoy a, a really good ribeye steak out of each one of these calves later on. Mark, I'll turn it over to you. So uh, one thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the differences between the two cattle. And uh, one thing we're, we're going to do here is show you the differences in, in terms of uh, where they're at muscularity wise and, and, and try to show you how to, to read differences in muscularity. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have our camera come over here, uh, step in directly behind uh, each one of the cattle, and then we're going to put them together here in just a moment. Uh, when you step in to evaluate muscularity in, in all species of livestock, you step in directly behind them and evaluate them back behind their shoulder, out to their hip and their pin set, and down to what we call their stifle area. Uh, and so you can see the difference, or you can see uh, how much muscle this steer has as you study him right here behind his shoulder, back out through his upper hip and what we call their pin set, uh, down through their stifle muscle even. Uh, and, and that is what we, we all eat. Uh, whenever you eat a, a ribeye steak or a T-bone steak, you're eating right here over their rib and loin, uh, and that, that butcher uh, will come in, uh, and whenever they harvest them, they'll cut their rib in half, uh, and then that's where you'll be able to get your steaks from. Uh, and we'll, like Mr. Bilderbach said, we hope to be able to show you some of those pictures uh, from Larry's Meat Market here in a few days. Um, and the other thing we want to talk about is, is just the differences in terms of finish and condition. Uh, every every animal is different in terms of how much finish condition they have. Uh, I'll let Mr. Bilderback tell you a little bit more about some of the visual indicators uh, you can see on, on a market beef animal. Okay, well, we're going to do some comparisons here in just, just a moment once we get that Hereford back in. We're going to talk about him as an individual and then, and then we'll put the two together. One thing you want to notice um, when you're talking about uh, flesh and, and cover and those vi visual indicators, you know, that, these things are gonna start laying on fat right here at the top of their shoulder, and it's gonna come down and back. So when, whenever you were to get your hands on him, you're gonna see that he's the softest right here, and he's gonna to continue to get somewhat harder every time as they come back through here. So this steer, although he has a lot of muscularity and a lot of muscle shape, he's not gonna be have as much cover. Uh, he's gonna be a higher cutability steer than when you compare him to the Hereford. And when you look at those fat indicators, sure, uh, we're lucky enough in the show steers, we'll get to handle them. But realistically, in the, you know, the rest of the world, you're gonna look for uh, a soft flank, a soft, loose, juicy flank. You're gonna look for some, for some cover right here, some pones uh, right here in the pin area, and then a full cod down here in the twist. Now this one, uh, he's, like, like we said earlier, he's got a lot of muscle. Uh, this one's been pushed really hard and Skip Adams got this one pretty stout uh, whenever they were trying to get him put together and he's, he probably needs to soften up just a little bit. We're going to go ahead and switch him out uh, and get this Hereford in here. We pulled the Hereford steer in uh, and like we talked about earlier, a couple things uh, we want you to be able to see the differences uh, between these two cattle, uh, where they're at in terms of their muscularity. Uh, if you step in behind this steer and you really start evaluating him right here behind his shoulder, you can see that this steer has more natural spread and width and dimension right here as you stand him right behind his shoulder blade. And he gets progressively wider from that point all the way back out to his upper hip and what we call their pin set here. Uh, and even down through his lower stifle and, and down through his quarter area there as well. Uh, he, he's got quite a bit more spread and just natural dimension 
right here over his rib and loin. Uh, and those are just some visual indicators that should tell you uh, when, when he goes to Larry's on Monday. Uh, and, they, and they harvest this steer and they cut this steer uh, there in his rib, uh, he's going to rib with a larger loin eye. Uh, and what we mean by that is his, his loin eye is going to be bigger, uh, and that means more product for you and I as consumers to go ahead and eat when we set them down there on our plate there at the dinner table. When you talk about this steer, and, and again, we're going to talk about some, some phenotypical uh, things about these two calves here in just a moment. This one. Um, when you go to studying him, when you get your hands on this guy, he's just, you can know, he's noticeably has more cover right over here, more cover down through that heart. He goes back into a fuller, softer plank. And when you come back here and you study him, sure, he has a bigger pin set. Well, at the same time, he's really pushing some of those fat indicators. This guy has a big, full hip, uh, he's poning up. And when you study him back down through here, it, his twist is soft and full. So this guy has, has quite a bit more cover on him. Now, there are some differences between those two steers in, in terms of, of cutability, mm -hmm. although this one's certainly high enough in this cutability. Uh, you know, this is steer, still one um, that has lots more cover. And again, like Mr. McPeak said, one that just progressively gets wider. Sure, he's a neat fronted one, but he progressively widens as he comes back into a big stout full kind of hip. We're going to go ahead and come back to you in just a second with both of these steers, and we'll talk about some differences. Welcome back uh, to our video. We have both these steers back here together so we can do uh, talk about some visual differences between these two steers. Now, we're, we're going to talk about a couple phenotypic things here before we go into to carcass merits and carcass traits. One thing you notice about this herper steer, although he's sure not as fresh as he was a couple weeks ago, he's, he's starting to lose some of that hair. And, and some of those things and, and not as fresh as he was a couple weeks ago when he was uh, due to go to the Oklahoma Youth Expo. However, he still has a lot of quality. When you study this one, Lauren, if you're coming back around here on the side and you study this steer and from a, from a, a visual standpoint, this guy has a lot of look. He has a lot of style and balance. He's neat in that chest for one that has plenty of cover and yet he, at the same time, he's long and extended up through that front end. When you study him from a muscle and sour power standpoint, just like Mr. McPeak talked about a second ago, he's one that has a big back. He's one that's gonna cut with a great big loin eye, and then that power carries on back all the way out through that hip and down through his stifle. A fat steer that still has some look, and one that reaches out. If you were to see him on the move, you're gonna notice he takes a big old ground consuming stride, one that's super sound, super soft and flexible there at the ground. Uh, as you heard Mr. Bilderback talk about earlier, uh, the word cutability. Uh, some of you are probably wondering what cutability is, and, and, and that's a relation uh, from, from muscle to, to fat ratio. Uh, the, we talked about the yellow steer, you know, he's going to yield a, a higher cutability carcass. And what we mean, is that, what we mean by that is his, his muscle to fat ratio, he has less fat than, than what, uh, than what the, the Hereford steer does. Uh, he's one that still has plenty of muscle. Uh, but his, his intramuscular fat is going to be less than what uh, than what the, the Hereford steer is, and what we mean by intramuscular fat is uh, it's the it's what gives those steaks uh, their tenderness, their flavorfulness, and their juiciness uh, as we go to start cooking them and we put them down on our plate to to eat them uh, whenever we sit down at home. Uh, sure, this steer, like we talked about, he's got plenty of muscle. He's really shapely, and you like that about him. Uh, you know, from, from a phenotypical standpoint, uh, talking about steers, uh, you heard Mr. Bilderback talk about the, the, the Hereford steer there. Uh, this steer has plenty of shape and width and muscularity. If we were going to change this guy in one particular area to make him more of a market ready type of steer, uh, we'd like to maybe just give him a shot more finish and cover uh, to make him a notch more ideal to reach that uh, possible choice grade, which is where we all kind of want to land. Uh, but still a steer here that, you know, hopefully you can see the differences between the two uh, in terms of where they're at muscularity wise, uh, where they're at in terms of their differences uh, from a finish standpoint, being more apt to grade choice. Uh, and I would say that that would certainly side uh, with the Hereford steer there. Uh, but if you talk about one that you're wanting some more lean uh, beef on, then you're probably going to side uh, with the, uh, the yellow steer here in this particular scenario, but I still think a very good pair of steers 
uh, here to show you lots of differences uh, in, in muscularity, in width, in, in finish, in condition, and cover, uh, and still have some phenotypical uh, differences from uh, a balance or a structural standpoint, certainly, uh, where, they're, where they're at from a structural integrity standpoint. In closing, we're excited uh, that you guys get to see the differences phenotypically in these steers and what they look like today. And we're even more excited to see the differences when we get these things opened up and get to study them on the inside and hopefully uh, get a bite of one of those big juicy ribeye steaks that's gonna come out of, out of these steers. What you're gonna notice uh, when we get the hide pulled off of these, um, once we harvest those next week, you're gonna have more cover on the outside here. That one's gonna be a little leaner and trimmer, okay? He's gonna be higher cutability, just like McPeak said. And then when you open those up and you study the, 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 the marbling, um, this one's sure going to be uh, a, a higher quality grade, um, sure more likely to, to get up into that upper choice uh, grade, while that one's, uh, the quality grade is going to be just a nickel lower. However, his lower, he's going to be a much lower numerical yield grade, thus is a good thing for him because he's going to bring us lots more lean beef and and so there's lots of positives for both of these steers. All right, so when you guys get done watching this video, be sure and log into your AET and, and do a journal entry about what you learned today. Thank you.